Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by. I'm Bob Polinski, Master of Wine. Today's video will be a focus on blind tasting. Specifically, I'll be tasting three red wines. Now, if you've watched some of the previous blind tasting videos that I've done, at times it's been a real struggle for me. Other times I've done reasonably well. If you're interested in watching a couple of the more current videos, I'll have links to those in the end screen of this video. Specific to this tasting, I'll apply some of the technique that I used uh, when I made my way through the Master of Wine program. And like any day of blind tasting, some of these days go very well, others not so much, but it's time to give it a go. Same as previous blind tasting videos, all the wines were selected by a WSET diploma level student that I've been working with. He also bagged and poured the wines. Now, the questions that I'm being asked is to identify the grape variety or varieties, place of origin as close as possible, vintage and retail price. Uh, for the last one, I'll, I'll make that in, in US dollars. These are the types of questions that are very typical of the Master of Wine exam itself. So let's get into it. Okay, let's get on to wine number one. Uh, there is a tremendous amount of extraction in this wine. The, uh, the core is nearly opaque. There's very little fade as you get out to the rim. So this tells me a couple of things. One, that's a grape variety that can bring a good deal of color extraction. And also based on the fact that the rim of the glass is not showing any sort of browning or tawny color, I would say this is also gonna be a very youthful wine as well. Uh, but probably gonna be a, a big boy. I think this wine is gonna have a, a huge amount of structure to it. Oh yeah, uh, there's some alcoholic heat on this wine. I mean, to the point where it almost singes the nose hairs a little bit. I would say the alcohol level on this is probably 14.5, maybe ticking close to 15%. There's a smoky, spicy character, which indicates there's some use of, of oak. Uh, deep red fruit notes. It has a little bit of a, a charcuterie characteristic to it, that, that dried meat note, uh, which, is, which is actually pretty cool. It smells a little bit like cloves as well, uh, but there's a huge amount of ripeness. Actually, it, it smells very, very appealing. In terms of the uh, appearance and the smell, it takes me to a couple of different grape varieties right away. Something like Cabernet Sauvignon seems to be a, a potential candidate, Syrah, Morvedra. Uh, I thought for a bit maybe Zinfandel, but I don't think so. I, I, I don't think many Zins will have this sort of uh, color extraction. It's possible with some very old vines, but Probably not. I don't think it has quite the spiciness associated with, with Zin. Uh, I'm thinking more along the lines of either Cabernet Sauvignon, Morvedra, or Syrah. Uh, definitely from a warm climate because it's very ripe and full. Now it's a matter of which, which place in the world would you put it in. Uh, you know, possibly something from... Uh, southern part of, of Spain, maybe that Utel Requena, uh, could be Garnacha, Mobile, I, I, I don't think that fits at all. Uh, Tempranillo, the color's not right, so I, I would discard that area of Spain. I can't see this coming from anywhere else in Spain. It just doesn't fit for a place like Priorat, and certainly not for Rioja. Um, south of France, maybe a place like Languedoc, I could see maybe one of the, the outlier uh, regions in Languedoc. Uh, Italy, there's nothing here that reminds me of, of anything that could be Italian. Um, other places around the world thinking in the US, possibly California, maybe something from Washington State. Uh, I could see maybe Syrah from, from some of the places in Washington have a style a bit like this. Uh, this maybe has a little bit more opulent, a little bit more ripe than what you'll find in Washington State. Um, in terms of grape variety, I, I'm really starting to nudge more towards some sort of Rhone variety, either like Syrah, Morvedra, maybe some sort of blend like that. Less so Cabernet. It doesn't have that, any pyrazine note. Uh, oftentimes with, with Cab, you get a little bit of this uh, cedary sort of characteristic. I'm not getting that. This is more deep red fruit. A uh, place like South Africa, New Zealand doesn't seem to make any sense. I'm thinking this is, uh, I'm going to say Syrah, Shiraz. Um, I would put this somewhere in Australia. Uh, 
Um, I'm not getting any of that eucalyptus note that you would oftentimes attribute to a place like Kunawara. Uh, I'm thinking more along the lines of a place like McLaren Vale. Uh, I think this is some, some older vine fruit, lower yields. As I mentioned, I think the fruit quality on this is excellent. But there's a refinement, a softness uh, to this that reminds me very much of a good number of Australian wines that I tasted. I lived there for a couple of years and really did a deep dive into what's going on in the Australian wine world. Uh, I'm going to say this is uh, Shiraz, McLaren Vale. It's a hot vintage. Uh, 2019 was, was a very warm year there. And uh, so I'll go with that. I also think this is not a cheap bottle of wine. I'm going to say this is maybe a $40 bottle. It seems to have that level of weight extraction and complexity to it. So that's what I'm going with. So now for the reveal on the first wine. This is... Okay, this is actually a pretty good start for me. Uh, Corrington Burge. Uh, this is a producer that uh, has links to the old Grant Burge winery, uh, one of the old iconic wineries there. Let's see, it, it is Shiraz, so I did hit that. Uh, this is from Barossa. I called it McLaren Vale. Eh, reasonably close there. Uh, it is 2019 vintage, uh, which again is a very warm vintage there. A lot of the wines did have some elevated alcohol, and that was the marker for me with... Uh, with that characteristic and it shows the retail price of being 45 to 50 dollars so i may have undershot that by just a tad but pretty good start all things considered uh the label says percival norman shiraz uh don't know the story behind that but based on the price of this wine this is definitely coming from one of their more premium sites and i would venture to guess this is older vines lower yields and the end result of that is, is wines that have more intensity, more weight, more structure. So not bad. I give myself a little pat on the back for that one. Not a bad start. Okay, now off to wine number two. This has a very different look than the previous wine. Uh, not nearly as deep in color. It's certainly not opaque at the core. As you get out to the rim, there, there's a bit of fade. Uh, it has a little bit of a, a pinkish tint to it as well. Uh, but based on the color, again, I don't think this is a very old bottle of wine. I'm going to say this is two, three years old at, at the very most. Okay, very interesting aromatics. It smells a little bit like lavender, a little bit like violet. It has this dried strawberry characteristic to it. Uh, maybe just a little hint of oak. Um, the alcohol level, uh, this is quite ripe. I'd say maybe 14, 14, 5, something like that. Uh, but very pretty aromatics, almost floral, perfuming. Going through the potential grape varieties that this could be, a uh, few things come to mind right out of the gate. Uh, something like Grenache, perhaps. Uh, Gamay comes to mind. Maybe some Italian grape varieties like Dolcetto, Barbera, uh, Nebbiolo, I don't think so. Sangiovese, the color doesn't seem quite right for that. Aromatics are, are very nice. I mean, like elevated, perfumey, expansive sort of aromatics. Uh, kind of dig it. It's quite good. Okay, on the palate, uh, quite high in acidity, very low in tannin. The, the wine is very round, soft. It has good length to it. I do believe this does have a little bit of oak to it as well. Uh, wow, thinking of what this could be. Thinking through a lot of the new world options, this doesn't seem to fit in many cases. Uh, this wine has a bit of a, a leaner, more of a restrained sort of character to it, and I can't put it in some place that's obviously new world. I, I'm going to go back to Europe somewhere on this. Uh, Grape variety. Okay, this may be a little bit of the power of suggestion because I had one of these just a few days ago, and this is somewhat reminiscent of it. Uh, I'm going to call this Gamay. Uh, because again, the, the, uh, the acidity is, is fairly high, which oftentimes that's the case with Gamay. The tannins are low, and it's highly aromatic. Uh, and some Gamay, uh, I'm thinking more Cru Beaujolais at a higher level, 
Uh, one of the more concentrated crews, something like Morgon or Moulin Avant, that's what I'm thinking. Also, I would say a fairly recent vintage, uh, maybe 2020. So I'm going to go with Gamay, Cru Beaujolais, Morgon, uh, Moulin Avant, one of those two. Uh, 2020 vintage, very good quality. In terms of price, I'll say this is around that $30, $35 range. Actually, feel fairly confident about that. So maybe I'm I'm, I'm living off the uh, the glory of what I had in that last wine, but uh, that's what I'm going to go with. Now to take a look at wine number two. Uh, this is hmm. okay. This is a Carlo Ravello Barbera di Alba Superior 2021 vintage. Uh, alcohol level of 14.5. So. It's uh, it's ripe. It certainly is uh, riper than many Barberas. Uh, I I missed the boat on this wine. I, obviously, I missed the grape variety. I called it Gamay. It's Barbera. Uh, I had it in the wrong region. I was actually off by the vintage. And in terms of the price point, uh, this shows a $25 retail. I was a little bit high in terms of, of where I put the wine. Not too happy with myself. I missed a marker on this wine, and that is that that pink rim in the glass or that pink meniscus. Oftentimes you'll find that with Barbera. This wine, this wine certainly has the, the pink, even though it's probably uh, tough to see in this video. It's there. Uh, I should have maybe gave Barbera a little more consideration. I think I mentioned it, but I should have gone a lot deeper in terms of looking at Barbera. This is one heck of a glass of wine though. I, I, I really do like this. Uh, you know, Barbera is an interesting grape variety. There are many versions of it that have no oak. They're very stripped down, basic style. Oftentimes, if you're in that, that part of, of northern Italy, you go into a lot of the uh, casual type restaurants there and you'll find Barbera and Dolcetto served commonly. And the wines can be tremendous in a very stripped down, basic way. This one is amped up a little bit. Uh, this does show it spends some time in oak. But it says seven months in large cask. Uh, sometimes you'll find uh, French oak used. This one is not. This is uh, Slovenian. So this tends to have more of a softer character in terms of the oak. Uh, but I think it's, it's, it shows in this wine. You can tell this wine has some of that, that characteristic to it where it spent some time in wood. Love the wine. I miss the mark. So moving on to the third and final wine. I feel really good about wine one. Came back down to earth on wine two. Let's see if I can end on a strong note and redeem myself. Wine three is a moderately deep color. Uh, very different than the first two wines. I uh, look at the core of this. Not dense, but there's decent extraction. As you get out to the rim of the glass, it looks a little, little thin, a little bit watery. There's no browning, there's none of that tawny characteristic. So I would say this wine is, is quite youthful, not more than two or three years old. In terms of the aroma, uh, there's a bit of a, a stewed, pruney, jammy characteristic to it. There's a bit of alcoholic heat. Uh, I'd say that alcohol is maybe around that 13, 5, 14 level. Uh, there seems to be a, a bit of oak. But that, that oak characteristic is, is odd. It, it has almost a manufactured sort of characteristic to it. Uh, there's a very candy, confected characteristic to this wine. Mm. On the palate, it's, it's actually quite sweet, uh, almost to the point of cloying. It's very soft, but it feels like the type of wine that has uh, some sort of industrial build to it. It's fruity, it's fresh, it's light, it's simple. It feels like this is made to a very low price point. Uh, I can see that it, it's in a, a bag, which means it's a 750 milliliter. If I didn't see that, I would have guessed this was some sort of box wine or jug wine. It has that kind of characteristic to it. Uh, in terms of grape variety, no clue. It, it does not sing any grape variety. I'm going to say this is a blend. Uh, place of origin, it's somewhere warm, maybe the Central Valley in California. Uh, it could come from the vast expanse of South Australia. Uh, a few other places around the world where it, it could be from, but it, it really has no strong sense of, of place. Uh, in terms of 
uh, vintage. It's very recent, maybe a, a 2021, 2020, something like that. It wouldn't surprise me if this is non-vintage. And in terms of price point, uh, this is low. Certainly not more than seven or eight dollars a bottle. If it's if it's more than that, it, it's it's definitely not worth it. Uh, but that's as far as I can go on this one. And now for the reveal on the third and final wine. This is a <laughs> okay. Uh, 2021 Yellowtail Shiraz from uh, South Australia with a tag on the back that said you should have nailed this because this wine was actually on the 2023 MW exam. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, okay. So uh, definitely a wine made for the masses. Huge production on this wine. I don't know what the level is, but this certainly is a, a million plus cases that are produced distributed in many places around the world. Um, warm climate. Uh, I did hit the vintage 2021, missed the grape variety, missed the place of origin. Fairly close in terms of, of price point, but uh, yeah, what a way to end the tasting. A little FYI before this video concludes, I do post wine questions on the community tab of my channel most days during the week. I'm actually going to up that to seven days a week. So if you subscribe, flip the notification bell on, you should get those questions each time they post. Just helps to up your wine game a little bit. I've got a couple of nice wines to drink tonight. I'll be drinking the Old Vine Shiraz a little bit later. Right here I have a little bit of the Barbera di Alba. I'm not so sure about the third one. I think I'll pass on that. But thank you so much for staying to the end of this video. Hope to see you again before too long. Cheers.